Hey guys, today we are taking one of our slow cooker favorites and turning it into an electric pressure cooker recipe. We're making pork chops and cabbage in our Ninja Foodie, all while having a whole lot of fun. Oh, oh, it's magic, you know. Welcome back to my camper kitchen. I am here today with my foodie and I'm going to be doing an electric pressure cooker recipe. You can make this recipe in an instant pot, a crock pot express, or there's a whole bunch of different brands out of there. We are just any kind of six quart um, electric pressure cooker. We're using a six and a half quart with our Ninja Foodie. Um, and we are converting a crock pot recipe that we I think showed you sometime last year. So if you don't um, have an electric pressure cooker, you can watch that video or we'll try and link down in the post that's about this, um, the link to the crock pot recipe so you can make sure and find it. It is a super simple recipe with super simple ingredients and very, very, very yummy. So I wanted to pop on here and show you. You might notice Mikey is missing. Um, he had, we had, a family emergency that he needed to fly home for, so I'm here in our newly redesigned camper kitchen. If you notice, we're at a little bit of a different angle. Sometime we'll have to show you how we changed everything, but it's making cooking and taping and editing so much easier. So he's away for a family emergency. Don't worry, everything's looking great. He's fine, Miss Dad's fine, I'm fine and Aunt Lou is fine, um, but he had to step away, so I needed to cook one of the recipes for you guys, so here I am, and that's what we're doing, and we're going to keep it super simple. In the Ninja Foodie, or other electric pressure cooker, we have four bone-in pork chops. I believe this is about two and a half pounds, I think, um, off the top of my head, but four pork chops, a package of four um, they're not the super thin ones, but they're not super, super thick. They're kind of your traditional cut pork chop in the um, bottom of the pot. And to that, we are going to sprinkle our favorite uh, steak seasoning. So you, you can, if you have your favorite, use it. Or you can go and um, in the grocery store aisle, there's all kinds of steak seasonings there. And you can just pick the kind that you like. Steak seasoning typically has salt in it. So we're just going to do this to taste, and I'm going to try and not knock my overhead camera all over the place. I give it quite a bit, because we're only doing one side, just to get a little bit of flavor. Um, and to that, we're adding one small head, the, the cabbage that I had was like about this big, um, small head of cabbage, cabbage chopped. Now, if you're making this in the crock pot, we tell you to thinly chop that cabbage. But in the electric pressure cooker, since we're going to cook it a little bit longer, uh, longer pressure wise, not longer actual time wise, but since we're going to cook it a little bit longer, I like the pieces to be bigger so that my cabbage doesn't turn to mush. And I'm trying to get around my camera over here. Um, so we just pile all this lovely cabbage on top. There we go. You won't have to um, adjust around the camera like I am. <laughs> um, and to that, we are going to add two cups of chicken broth. Now the chicken broth is going to have some sodium and saltiness to it. Um, you could use low sodium if that is a concern for you. There's one. And two. Alrighty. And now we are going to, if I can find it, it's down here. Nope. I'm going to salt and pepper my cabbage. If I can find what I did with my salt. Oh my goodness. So 
I can keep it handy, you know. Okay, so we're just going to add some salt and pepper. You can always add this afterwards, too. That's a lot of cabbage to just go off of the pork flavoring and the chicken broth. So we're just going to add a little bit. Again, keeping in mind that we did add two uh, cups of chicken broth, you may not want to add tons and tons of salt, and you can always salt it later. So to the top of that, we are adding a stick of butter, and we're just plopping that sucker in the middle, hopefully, and it will melt and get all in there with all of those flavors. So now all we got to do is um, I got to remove my camera, but then we're going to put the pressure cooker lid on the foodie or your pressure cooker lid on any of the devices that you have. We're going to pop the lid to seal and set it under high pressure for 15 minutes. Um, and then we're going to let it natu naturally release for about 15 minutes to come down as much as it will and then we'll pop it to vent anything extra. So I'll see you in about 30 minutes, 15 minutes to cook uh, once it reach, reaches pressure, 15 minutes to come down, and we'll see the results in three, two, one. Oh, oh, it's magic, you know. That's right, I am back, and a couple things here. One, I'm back at the cow. Yes, Chris told you that we had a family emergency back home. I had a brother that was sick, he is fine now. He's going to be great. He is great. And so are we. And you're great for hanging out with us while we're doing this. Two, the reason that I'm actually here taping this is Chris taped the ending to the video that she started. And one of two things happened. <laughs> one, she forgot to hit record for the end where we show you the goodness that is within the foodie. Or two... It's very possible that when I transferred all the files off of the com off of the camera to the computer that I may have forgotten to put that particular segment on the computer before I deleted all the footage off the com off of the, the camera. I'm going with the former that Chris forgot to hit record. Anyway, <laughs> that's okay because I went ahead and put it together again because we love pork chops and cabbage, so it was like double reward. We get this again, and I was in Indiana. We're taping this in Texas, so I didn't get any, so this is my way to get some. So what I'm going to do, other than let my mouth water, I've already let this come down from pressure naturally for 15 minutes, and then I went ahead and released, vented off the rest of the pressure. There wasn't that much, but you make sure you want to do that because, well, on the foodie, you don't have to worry about it. On a lot of the, the more modern pressure cookers, you don't have to worry. It will not let you open, but if you're using something a little old school, Make sure all the pressure is gone before you open this up. Because there's a lot of pressure in there from all that liquid. Ooh, look at the steam. <gasps> oh my goodness. I was going to try and do something cool there and it didn't work. But I am going to show you. Watch out for that lid. It's hot too. Look at all that goodness right there. See how that cabbage has changed color? It's soaked up a lot of that. Hey, look. There's some drink packets from Chris. And a receipt from the store. No. Anyway, look at that goodness right there. That cabbage has soaked up all the flavor from that steak seasoning. Oh, I'm starting to steam things up here. Oh, yeah. But my goodness, look how good that looks. That cabbage has softened up. And it those bones fell right off those pork chops. Yeah, <laughs> because... <laughs> all right. For the rest of the story, she says... Go to the store, get the ingredients for cabbage and pork chops. I'm like, okay, well, what are all the ingredients? She says, it's in the blog. So I go to the blog, just like she says. She's over there looking at me. And I got the ingredients, just like she said. And then the blog for the crock pot post, it says to use boneless pork chops. Yeah, I didn't look at the electric pressure cooker recipe. We can't live in the past, y'all. We're going to live in the future. And in the future, I'm going to eat me a pork chop. I'm going to get me some. And I tell you what, one thing Chris said to do, and I pretty much follow the instructions on that, <laughs> was you want to cut your cabbage thicker because when it's under pressure, just like some of the other recipes where we've talked about peppers, any kind of vegetable, if you have to cut that vegetable up, if you're going to put it under pressure, 
cut it a little bigger that way it'll hold together better and this is what it looks like I feel like we're too far away that you know we've I've been gone for a couple days so we kind of you know need to reconnect so I'll be right there you're gonna have to bend okay down. so I'm gonna have to bend down because in the new setup I do this I hit a wall so hi Look at this goodness right here. Look at that. You see that cabbage is all softened up? And then you got this pork chop over here. Now, I got pork chops from the local HEB down here in Dripping Springs, Texas. But look at that. Look at this. Watch this. It went right through that pork. In fact, that pork chop is falling apart. Let me get some of the cabbage. Hi. Sorry, I was kind of drifting away there thinking about what I'm about to do. Give her a taste test. Y'all, that is heaven. Now, again, off of the blog post that I looked at, she didn't mention salt or pepper, but where she did salt and pepper it earlier, I would salt this just a wee bit more because I didn't salt it at all. I just used the steak seasoning the butter and the chicken broth which gives it an amazing flavor my personal preference i would put some salt and pepper on that but let's talk about texture real quick the cabbage is very very soft it's velvety it's buttery it's absorbed that chicken flavor it's a, a cabbage is something that will take on whatever flavor you give it and so it's really pulled in that chicken and that steak seasoning and that butter oh my goodness the pork is very, very tender. It's we very went juicy. For 12 minutes, not 10. Yes, on this particular one, and I'm glad I did because I got really thick pork chops. Uh, we went for 12 minutes on the foodie, and I'm telling you right now, well, as you can see, I'm going to take a second bite. Mm. That's perfect. The pork is tender. It's got a good chew to it just to make you really appreciate that meat that cabbage is just it's velvety it melts in your mouth and it's like a reward because it gives you all those flavors oh my gosh mm. now one final tip I'm gonna give you one thing Chris didn't do in the earlier part of the video that I did is this morning Chris made bacon in the foodie. So we had that bacon grease, that fat that was down at the bottom of the pan and we saved it and I left it there. Put in my cabbage and my pork and all the rest of the ingredients and cooked it with it. Another level. That's N-U-T-H-E-R level. Another level up. You get a little bit of that smoky flavor in there, that salty bacon in there. Uh, amazing. This is a winner. This is dinner in 30 minutes. And you're gonna be happy if you've liked the crock pot recipe you're absolutely gonna love the electric pressure cooker recipe we did this in our ninja and it turned out absolutely perfect I could keep saying it's perfect or I could just start eating because one I'm perfect and two I'm hungry mm. but y'all that's gonna be a good dinner nobody's gonna be able to deny it mm. hey Thanks for forgetting to hit record <laughs> so that I can take this again. Y'all, if you like what you're seeing here, please give us a thumbs up. Also, if you have not become a member of the Croc Posse, then what are you waiting on? All you got to do is click that little subscribe button down below and you are a member of the Croc Posse. And also, if you want to see what we're doing as soon as we do it, click that little bell down at the bottom. What do we call that bell? The ding -a -ling. The ding -a -ling. That's right. Click the ding -a -ling and you'll know as soon as we put up a new video, we put them up all the time. And whatever you do, laugh often. Eat good food. And speak life. See y'all. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's so good. Look at that. That fork just goes right through that mm -hmm. fork. Showing you how to make electric pressure cooker. La -la 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 -la. If you want to see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're funny, enough to send us money, click the Patreon link below.